Hey y'all, this is Grace here on Books and Cooks. I'm here to start a new reading vlog. So it is the 3rd of March today. Um, we just got started in March and uh, I am at a point where I'm doing a lot of reading for the booktube prize that I can't talk about that I need to kind of wrap up in the next couple weeks. And outside of that, I think my plan is to do some mood reading. And so I figured this vlog would be a good place to talk about that. So um, I am probably today going to finish up Akata Warrior, which has been so fantastic. Um, yeah, so I'm just loving this book. This is the second book in the Nsibidi Scrolls series. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, by Nettie Okorafor. And it's sort of like middle grade YA fantasy. Um, it's African Jujuism is how she describes it. And so basically following this character, Sunny, who is American and Nigerian. She's living in Nigeria. Um, she has albinism and in the first book she also realizes that she has magic and she's part of this group called the leopard people that's kind of a secret uh, group of people who are, are magical people uh, operating in the world and she ends up part of this uh, coven of young people who are kind of fighting different evil in their world and this is such I would say this is like a really cozy series in a lot of ways which makes sense because it is written for like children and young people definitely and also deals with like pretty intense and heavy topics um, deals with a lot of violence and also with environmental destruction and um, different social things that are relevant to Nigeria but also to the United States. There's a lot of discussion of um, the the way that Black people are treated in the United States and how that may differ from Nigeria but then also some of the issues that are going on in Nigeria specifically. Um, so that's really great. I am loving it. I would highly recommend it. I, again, I don't know what I'm going to pick up next. I'm, I am trying to move read a little bit this week. Um, but I am listening to Nina Totenberg's memoir, Dinners with Ruth, that is narrated by Nina Totenberg, which is, you know, cool in the sense that I know that voice from NPR, but I can't discuss my feelings about that book yet. Um, and I'm also a bit more than halfway through the Buster Keaton biography. So I might try to finish that this weekend because we're supposed to have a pretty big blizzard, um, maybe eight to 12 inches in this area. Fingers crossed it could be more. So uh, I might take some b-roll of that so you can see what the blizzard looks like as well. And uh, I'll be cleaning my house, probably listening to audiobooks and reading a lot. So that's the excitement for the weekend and I'll check in later on when I have another update. Bye. Hey, so I just wanted to check in for another vlog clip. It is Saturday night, so I haven't checked in in a little bit over 24 hours, but I did finish up Akata Warrior by Nettie Akorafor, and this was really good. Um, I think it was a little less successful for me than the first book in terms of like the plotting and the amount of plot and action compared to like character development and things like that but overall it was still really really good um definitely on the higher end of middle grade I would say or early YA in terms of kind of what the book deals with and the age range that I'm guessing it is targeted for it does it, it's published by Penguin Teen so it is sort of categorized as young adult um but it still follows a character who is quite young. And I'm excited to pick up the third book when it comes in from the library, which might happen later this month. And then today, well, overnight, we had a blizzard here and it was about a foot of snow that we got. So I took some footage of the snow and um, just some little clips showing you what that was like. But I was shoveling a lot with my husband, so I listened to... Um, Dinners with Ruth by Nina Totenberg, which I can't 
talk about in detail, but I got through a lot of that. I'm now 66% through that book on audiobook. And this evening I've been reading Buster Keaton by James Curtis. Um, and I have about 200 pages left in this book to finish it. So I'm probably going to focus on those this weekend just because I would like to kind of wrap up my reading for the booktube prize before the middle of the month um, and I want to sort of get those done. Something else I can talk about a little bit is this book which I started yesterday. I've been in a big nonfiction mood and this is called Ejaculate Responsibly, A Whole New Way to Think About Abortion by Gabrielle Blair. I saw someone review this I think on Goodreads and it's a very short, it's like less than 200 page argument for thinking differently about abortion and um basically on the back it says why abortion is a men's issue and then there are a bunch of arguments that this this author builds to kind of describe how a lot of the responsibility for unplanned pregnancies um is more or equally at least if not more an issue of men versus uh, female bodily control. There's already, you know, women do a lot to try to control our bodies already. Um, and it's not necessarily a, a sort of 50-50 situation at all. So I feel like that's where this argument is coming from. It's interesting so far. Um, I'm trying to think how to talk about it because it's so short. And I feel like, I just feel like people would benefit from reading it themselves and thinking through it. I'll be interested to see how I feel about it in the end. I think that um, I do have some issues with the way that the author is talking about this whole subject and still still discuss, discussing it as like an individual person's uh, responsibility to avoid versus um, really pushing the idea that being able to end your pregnancy is normal health care for women um, and empowering women to do that. So I, I'll be interested to see how this ends because I do still feel like it's an argument that's trying to convince people on the religious right specifically as to why women's rights should be sort of respected, except that basically the argument pins on sort of controlling men uh, and men's actions more and like blaming men more for abortion than respecting women and so I don't I, ha I don't love that if that's kind of really where this argument is coming from um, but in and of themselves her points are interesting and I can understand sort of the reasoning behind having this discussion so I'll be interested to see how I feel at the end of this short book but that's my update All right, so I wanted to do my final vlog update <laughs> for this weekend vlog. Um, it's actually Tuesday, the 7th of March, and I didn't vlog check in on Sunday or Monday. Sunday was just very busy. Uh, we ended up building a new desk for me, which I'm sitting at right now, and kind of getting my office set up really nicely. Um, and also moving our lizard into a new tank and doing some more shoveling and like a bunch of things around the house. But it was actually a very productive reading day. I finished up uh, Dinners with Ruth by Nina Totenberg, which is for the book two prize. So I can't talk about it, but I'm very glad I was able to get that finished at least. Um, and that leaves me with one full book, Salido, to read and also about 200 pages still of the Buster Keaton book. I've made a little progress on that, but not a ton. So I have a little bit left for that. But in addition to that, I did some other reading this weekend. So I'm gonna talk about that. I ended up finishing Ejaculate Responsibly, uh, A Whole New Way to Think About Abortion by Gabrielle Blair. I had brought up some 
of my qualms potentially with this book in my last update. Um, and so I wanted to say <clears throat> regarding this book, I liked it in the end. I thought it was a really solid argument. I thought that um, there were very interesting cases made for a lot of the points that Gabrielle Blair has in this, uh, this short book. I do think that this is coming from the perspective of a, uh, a religious person. She is uh, a Mormon, Gabrielle Blair, um, who seems to not want abortion to continue at, at the amount that it has been, right? I haven't looked up her personal stance on abortion, so I can't speak to that specifically, but definitely this book comes from the space of like if let's have the goal of decreasing the numbers of abortions that need to happen in the United States. I don't personally think that's necessarily like a bad goal. Um, I think that there are lots of ways that abortions are not necessarily the preferred healthcare, uh, healthcare mode for preventing pregnancy, right? There are lots of things that can be done prior to that that are less intense upon people's bodies specifically. That being said, I don't know that I love the perspective of we need to decrease abortions uh, as kind of the goal. I think we need to make sure that women have access to the healthcare that, well, I should say that people with uteruses have access to the healthcare that they need, <laughs> um, no matter what that is. And women's healthcare or people's healthcare should be prioritized above the health of a growing fetus. That's my personal stance on it. So coming from that perspective, I thought that was interesting. Um, and I think that this makes many good points about different ways that you could decrease abortion, uh, the need for abortion in our society without doing anything to actually ban abortion specifically. In fact, um, I think it makes the important case that a lot of times when you do ban abortion um, and access to reproductive health care, it actually increases the numbers of unwanted pregnancies and um, makes the quality of life much lower for, for people in that area and it increases maternal mortality rates and people end up going to access that health care um, in different ways that are not legal. So again, interesting. Um, definitely a lot of good points. Definitely something I think that think that maybe men would benefit specifically from reading or, you know, partners who are the partner that could, uh, could procreate through ejaculation. <laughs> um, not all, not all people with penises are men, right? So that, um, that is something that, she sort of addresses at the beginning of this book, but then says that by including um, gender inclusive language, it would kind of erase that experience, which I sort of understand, but I also think it's important to include gender inclusive language because not ev everyone um, who is assigned male at birth or assigned female at birth identifies with those characteristics. So interesting. I would recommend it. Um, I'm gonna be keeping it on my shelves because it has some really cool arguments. So that that was cool. And then the other things I started, I started All the President's Men by Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, which has been on my TBR for a very long time. Um, this has been really fun. I literally just started, I'm only a chapter in, but I'm already very much enjoying it. And um, I'm liking continuing with the nonfiction feelings that I've been having this weekend. So I'm gonna continue with that. And then I also started on audiobook, the book Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo. And this is a, um, a horror book. So interesting so far, I'm about like 25% into it and I'm enjoying it. Um, and I will have an update once I have finished that for sure for this channel, but that was kind of the vlog for this weekend. So I wanted to wrap it up. I hope that you're doing well and having a good week. Bye.